Gretchen and welcome back to my channel. I am very excited for today's video because it has been a highly requested video and as you can tell from the title I will be giving you a tattoo tour. Every time I ask for video ideas or asking you all what you want to see from me every single time people say give us a tattoo tour and I haven't done one yet just because every single time it would come up I would have an appointment coming up for a new tattoo and I wanted to make sure that I would include that tattoo but I've just recently got my newest one and I don't actually have any appointments lined up. So I thought this was the perfect time to do a tattoo tour because I don't have any plans for new ones, at least right now. And of course that could change within the next like few weeks or so because a lot of my artists are opening their books back up. So, you know, maybe I'll get in there. So I thought now would be a good time to give you this tattoo tour. I don't think I'm really gonna go chronologically just because I do not remember every single date that I got tattoos or really the order that I got them in. Like I remember my first few tattoos and then I remember my most recent tattoos, but I don't remember the chronological order in between. I feel like I'm just gonna go like start up here and work my way down. I'm also not gonna discuss pain levels too much. I might touch on it briefly if I can remember what the pain was like, but I have used numbing cream on some tattoos and then other tattoos. It's been so long since I got them that I don't really remember. So the basic information I'm gonna give you is just like what the tattoos are. I'm also gonna mention the tattoo artists, like their Instagram handle in the description below for these tattoos. If I don't mention an artist for a specific tattoo, it's because of one of two things. One, I don't remember exactly who did it, so I can't really link their account or I'm just not thrilled with like the experience of getting it done. Like no, no beef or anything like that. I just would rather focus on the artists that I like and had a pleasant experience with and continue to go back to. So let's go ahead and get started. I did have to make notes because there are some tattoos that I just plain forget about. We'll start with this one. The music notes behind my left ear. Yes, I do have music notes back here. You can't really see them. I'll insert pictures for these tattoos, like close-ups of them so that you can get a better understanding, but I do have music notes behind my ear. Honestly, those were not bad for me. The worst part was hearing the tattoo machine right up against your ear. That was pretty rough, but like pain-wise, it wasn't that bad at all. But yes, I do have music notes back here and I forget about them all the time. Literally took like my artist less than 20 minutes to do. Also in this upper region, I have the back of my neck tattooed. I will insert a picture. It is a Fleur de Lis and it's got watercolor. The colors are purple and yellow because of LSU. For those that don't know, I earned both of my master's degrees from LSU, Louisiana State University. That's where the name for my channel came from. You see the go for go Gretchen. Go is a word frequently used down in Louisiana at LSU with the Saints in New Orleans, all sorts of areas. So I went with alliteration. But yeah, so I got that the second graduation. So I've gotten two master's degrees from LSU and the second graduation, it was just my mom and I that flew down for the graduation. So I got this tattoo kind of like commemorating it. I would like to get it like not redone, but like added onto it, reworked a little bit, but I did get it done while I was in Louisiana and I do not remember the artist. It took way longer than it should have. It's a very simple tattoo, but the artist was like newer and was very meticulous with things and this tattoo shouldn't have taken nearly as long. It took like five hours. It shouldn't have taken that long. All right, so let's move down to this arm just because this has less than this arm. Let me take my watch off so I can give you a better look of things. So over on my left arm, we have my crow sitting on a skull surrounded by amaryllis blooms. The amaryllis blooms are because of Shinedown's album Amaryllis, which is my favorite Shinedown album. Shinedown is one of my favorite bands. So that was like a little just added to this piece. And yes, it's a little, little crow sitting on a skull just right here on my bicep. And then we move down here, we have my Plague Doctor, which was scheduled prior to the Panini, ironic, but the Plague Doctor was scheduled before everything shut down. And then obviously we had to postpone the appointment and I got it several months later. So it was just timing for that one. Then here we have Carnelian Crystal. I just thought it fit really well with the Plague Doctor as well as with my tarot card, which is the Queen of Wands. It's my favorite card in a tarot deck. So I just thought those all work together. Plague Doctor, tarot, crystals. I love this forearm. It just works so nicely. But then also on this forearm, we have 
tattoo lyrics over here that say take the path that the weak ones demonize this was one of my first tattoos it is a lyric from a disturbed song and i still really like it it doesn't really fit in with everything over here no but i don't have any plans to like cover it or anything and then we have the first tattoo that i ever got which is my book i love it I still don't plan on covering it. Yes, it does face me. So it's upside down to everyone else. But I also didn't know like back then that people got tattoos facing away from them so that it looked a certain way to other people. But I still love it. Do I read as much? No, which is funny because one of my master's degrees is in library science. So there's that. You know, it was my first tattoo and I just love it. So I might do something like around it, like incorporate it into something. We'll see. So that is that arm. And moving on to my right arm, which is my animal sleeve. Before we actually get into the arm, I do have hydrangeas back here. I absolutely love this tattoo and I'm so sad that I don't like ever get to see it just because it's on my back shoulder. But I love these hydrangeas so much. Hydrangeas are one of my favorite flowers and I just love the colors of it. It just looks so cute. And there are little bees. The little bees down there too. They're cute. So then we have the arm, which is mostly full. We've got some gaps that we need to throw some things in there. Right here, we have my possum and my raccoon. They have little berries and there are mushrooms surrounding it. On my inner bicep, I have my little bunny surrounded by clover. We also have a fern in here as like a little gap filler. And we have this butterfly over here with more ferns, also acting like gap fillers, right? below the rabbit on my inner bicep. We have my hedgehog in my ditch. To this day, that's probably the most painful tattoo I've ever gotten right in this area. Probably the most painful one I have ever gotten. It's a hedgehog surrounded by strawberries. I used to have a hedgehog named Violet. She was super sweet to me, not so much to everyone else. But I did want to get something to show my love for hedgehogs, but ooh, to this day, that was the most painful tattoo that I ever got. And I was very close to telling my artist to just take my arm off because it was that bad. I thought for sure like the needle would go right through my arm. It, it was, it was bad. Then we have my fruit bat that everyone comments on. Just the colors of him are gorgeous. He's my little fruit bat, I love him. He's adorable. He also acted as a cover up. I had a tattoo right here that I wanted covered up. So we worked with him. So that got covered up in the process. We have a sunflower that needs a little rework to it. It didn't heal the best. So I need to set up an appointment with my artist to like go back in there and just recolor some areas. And here we have a chickadee on some holly. I love chickadees. I've always thought that they were very comical birds. They were my favorites growing up. I love my little chickadee. He's so cute. And on my inner forearm, which does need a little work as well as the sunflower here is my squirrel with her oaks and maple leaves. That is this arm. Also just going on this hand, we have two tattoos on my fingers. One is this lotus design, which unfortunately I did rip from Pinterest back before I realized that was a big no-no. So I don't mind it now, but I do have a ring that kind of covers it up. Will I rework it? No, cause it's such a small space that it's just like, eh, I'll go with it but the ring is really pretty on top of it. And then I have this, which we don't talk about this. This has looked like this since I got it done. I will not be linking that artist, mostly because I don't actually remember who did it, but I'm not very happy with it. It does need to be filled in. I would love for it to actually not look faded. I know finger tattoos fade faster over time, but this is, look this way since I got it done. Like once it healed, that's what it looked like. So I love the little crescent moon, but it needs help. Now moving on to my legs, which I'll insert pictures here cause like standing up and showing that is gonna be really difficult. So we'll start with my right leg. On my right thigh is my tiger tattoo, which this tiger tattoo does have a connection to LSU much like the Fleur de Lis does because we modeled this tiger after Mike the tiger, the tiger that was specifically there while I was getting my education. And then he is surrounded by iris flowers because the iris is the state flower of Louisiana. He was my, first big piece. It did take two sessions, I think. I think it was two sessions. It was the first time that I like experienced true ouchies while getting a tattoo, to put it nicely. Moving on down to my calf. On the inner calf, we do have my skull planter. This is one of my most recent ones. I absolutely love how this turned out. The artist does amazing skull planters. I was like, I've got to get one. They're so cool looking. And then right underneath that tattoo is a bundle of Forget-me-nots, I actually got that on my birthday in 2018, 
I believe it was. And that is in honor of my pop pop who did pass away from Alzheimer's. But forget me not flowers are like the Alzheimer's awareness symbol. So I got them in his honor. Moving around to the back of my right calf, we have my lady face. She matches the male face on my left calf. So we'll get to him in a minute, but they are like a little rockabilly pair. I think she is so cute. I love her face so much. And she also has a little butterfly tattoo on her neck. She's just really cute. I love her so much. And then on my outer right calf, we have my black cat tattoo that is surrounded by yellow tulips. Tulips are my absolute favorite flower. We have like tulips, sunflowers, hydrangeas. I just love those flowers so much. The tulips have always been my favorite, especially yellow ones. And then the black cat is kind of modeled after my black cat Spock. He's got like the little white chest furs. And so he is also a cover up tattoo. I had a design there of a cat and dog silhouette, another design ripped from Pinterest before I realized that that was a no, no. And so I was like, all right, these lines are really thick. What can we put there? And I was like, black cat tattoo, it's perfect. So that is on my outer right calf. And then moving over to my left leg on my left thigh, I have my wolf tattoo surrounded by red roses. He kind of pairs well with the tiger tattoo on my right thigh. For some reason, he was more painful than the tiger. I'm not entirely sure why. I also really butchered his healing because I was a ding dong who decided to get this tattoo and then like five days later, go to New York City in March when it's cold and snowy and wear tights without anything in between the skin and the tights was not my smartest moment when it came to healing a tattoo because then the tights like stuck to the tattoo. This was before I tried Saniderm. Stuck to the tattoo and I'd had to like peel the tights away from the tattoo and it pulled up some ink. So he's another one that needs some touch-ups. It was gnarly and not my, not my finest moment. <laughs> Moving on down to the calf. On my inner left calf, we have my rats with their pumpkins. I love this tattoo so much. And I'm not sure she's still using it for her business cards, but for the longest time, my artist had this design on her business cards. I love how they look so much. It is like just a pure fall tattoo. I love how it turned out. It looks so good. Love little rats. They're so adorable, but with pumpkins, ugh. It's even better. And then, like I mentioned with my lady face, I do have a male face. They pair together. I got the male face done first. He's not really modeled after anyone. He also has a diamond on the side of his neck. So the lady face has a butterfly tattooed on her neck. The male face has a diamond tattooed on his neck and both reference Shinedown songs. Hers is for the crow and the butterfly and his diamond tattoo references my personal favorite Shine Down song, Diamond Eyes. They have like little, little details in them that I adore so much. And I think they just look so cute together. And then onto my outer left calf, we have starting at the top, we have my most recent tattoo, which is my Elton John Q Pie. And oh, he is so adorable. I was supposed to get him done back in April, but then we had to switch some things around. So I just got him like not that long ago. At a time of filming this video, he's not even a week old yet, but I love him. He turned out so nicely. I'll insert the picture so you can see like the outfit inspiration. Not in my typical style of tattoos, but the artist that does all my animal tattoos loves doing cute pies. So I'm like, let's do an Elton John one because Elton John is one of my favorite musicians, is also like a nostalgia musician for me. Makes me think of my mom, him and Fleetwood Mac. I love how he turned out. He's so cute. And then right below that is another one of my first like big tattoos. And this is a fluorite crystal cluster. And I got this tattoo from a visiting artist. I was really happy to be able to book an appointment with her while she was here visiting a shop that I frequent. To this day, I still love it. So those are my current tattoos. I tried to run through them pretty fast so that we're not here all day. I do not have any tattoos like in my torso area. I don't have any yet on my back. I don't have any on my chest. I don't have any on my throat. I don't have any on my feet. I'm really scared for my feet because there's not a lot of flesh down there. So I'm scared to get my feet done, but I really want to get them done. But I really want my hands done. That's like the one that I want done the most, that and my chest. But yeah, so those are my current tattoos. I hope you enjoyed this tattoo tour. Again, I will list the artists in the description below. I'll like list out the tattoos and then who did them. Again, if the tattoo doesn't have an artist next to it, it's because I don't remember who it is or 
didn't have a stellar of an experience with that artist so I don't really want to promote them hopefully you enjoy this and I'm sure I'm gonna book an appointment soon so like this tattoo tour will be outdated probably within the next few months special thank you to my patrons you can help support the channel on patreon while having access to videos early viewing patron only content and more but that is it for this video if you enjoyed it please be sure to give it a big thumbs up don't forget to go down there and hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell so YouTube will let you know when I upload next but until next time Bye, all.